Hi there, thanks for joining me today. I'm Jackie, and if you've been watching me on YouTube, you may have seen me make a few attempts at acrylic paint pouring. So I saw this technique on YouTube where people were doing a swipe pour, so I got playing around with my paints and I gave it a try, and this is what I got. And I'm just fascinated by it because it makes me think about all the bubbles kind of flowing up from the bottom of the ocean. It's really, really interesting to me. So so I want to do another one and I'm going to show you what I did to get this result. So this is called a swipe pour. So what I'm going to do is drizzle a whole bunch of paint onto this tile. Not really in any order except I'm going to try and go up and down a bit. I'm not... I'm kind of not being overly particular about what I do because I've been watching a ton of videos and when you watch these videos you get all these ideas and I tend to watch the ones that look beachy so the colors of the blues and the greens all those beachy colors tend to get me and I've seen a few of these swipe pours that fascinate me so I thought I gotta try this so I'm just pouring on some of my leftover paints like this. Nothing really fancy about it. Just trying to use up all this extra bit. Doesn't look very pretty, but that's okay. And I'm putting a bunch of white down here at the bottom. I can't use all my white. I made way too much white. And I want some gold in here. Of course, the gold. It's got a little bit of a shimmer in it and it just fascinates me. Now I think I'll also... I want to swipe white, but in front of the white I think I'd like some of this blue so that it swipes some white and blue. I think that's enough. You can tell that this is not an exact science. And then I have this piece of plastic. It's kind of like a firm plastic. I just cut it from some scrap plastic that I had. I tend to be a bit of a scrap user. Whoops. You can hear all that crinkling under my feet. This is messy business, so I've decided I should stand on a tarp so I don't cover the floor with paint. It won't wash off. So you take this and you basically kind of get the paint around the bottom of the tile and then get it lined up so that it's lying on the paint and then you swipe. Hem and this is why this is called the swipe technique. Whoops, it doesn't take, just go back and swipe again, or I am doing that. Probably not the proper way to do it. So that's not quite right because I stopped halfway through. So I'm just going to come back and swipe again, which I don't think will hurt any. And then I'm going to, I'm going to put some more white and then swipe it over top again. This is the advantage of using scrap materials for your art experimenting. If it doesn't turn out, it's like, oh well. Now that side's dirty, so I'm going to use the other side. Haven't had a chance to clean it yet. And then, whoops, I want it to be smooth. So I'll make sure it's attached all the way along. Oh, for heaven's sakes. This is going to take some practice. You watch these videos and people are just like whip, whip through it and it all comes out so beautiful. So we'll see how it comes out for me. 
part of the learning process. If this comes out good, I'll try a really big one. This is a very small tile. Oh, that's so interesting. Oh, I like that because it's kind of white at the bottom and then the white just kind of goes up through the whole tile. Now I'm going to take my butane torch and put a little bit of heat on it. See if I can get some of those bubbles to come up. There's quite a few bubbles already showing. Cells. Down here. Oh, this is so interesting. Now I should let that sit and just see what happens. Okay, I have to try another swipe pour before I leave this. So I'm going to go again with some of the same colors and some different. So I'm going to put on a bit of phthalo blue because I just love phthalo blue. It's hard to make anything beachy without it. And of course my turquoise because that is another essential if you're at the beach. So this time I'm going to put in some greens as well. So I have my phthalo green and I'm just going to put a little drizzle of that. It's a deep beautiful dark green. Oops, I got a big splotch of it there. That's okay. It's all to add interest. There's nothing... Well, I shouldn't say there's nothing... I was about to say there's nothing planned or exact about acrylic paint pouring. You can try and plan. You may not succeed. Now I'm going to put some of this aqua green. So we've got two blues two greens and I'm going to put the gold. I'm like I wanted to put the gold on top just to see if it came through okay. And then I also have a bit of this okra yellow that I thought might be quite interesting. So I'm just going to put that on top as well. Now I'm going to do this bit that I did on the previous one where I did some blue right here and then quite a bit of white at the bottom because I want to swipe white but I'm swiping the white and then over the blue and then over the rest of the colors. So quite a bit of white at the bottom. Man, it doesn't look like much right now. Okay, where's my swiper? So I got my piece of plastic. I have cleaned it off even though it's starting to look a little bit grungy. And I'm just going to scrape some of that white over the edges. Do, 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 do. So exact. Now, I'm going to try and get it even this time. See if we can get it all in one swipe. So I've put that down so that the plastic is touching all along the paint. And then swipe away. Hmm, missed some. Ooh, interesting. Different color patterns, definitely getting a different result here. Wipe that off a bit. And I'm going to try again because it wasn't super even. And I think I might drizzle a little bit more blue here so I don't have quite as much white at the bottom. 
Although, as I saw from my other one, all the other paints tended to come through. The white did not dominate. Ooh, this is wild. I just can't believe what happens here. I don't have enough paint over there on that side. I think I'm going to do a bit of a drizzle here. Don't ask me why I'm choosing this color. That's just the one that got in my hand when I reached over. Blue and bit, uh, there's quite a bit of green in there already, but I think to balance it out tiny bit of green. I think that's very wiped off. Alright, that's better. There wasn't enough paint on that side. Wow! Quite amazing. Now if I let this sit, more and more will come out of that white there. I think. Okay. I can't resist. I feel like having some blue at the bottom, so why not? It's my piece of art. I can do what I want. And now I'm going to take a small piece of plastic and I'm going to swipe on the bottom with the blue and see if some of the white comes through the blue on the bottom. Another possibility of, I could ruin it here. I'm just playing. I'm going to take my blue stir stick instead of the swiper and maybe get some really interesting stuff happening at the bottom here. Yeah, the bottom was a little too boring. Not anymore. I've got some fascinating stuff happening there now. All right, let's see what happens to this after it's had some time to sit. So I am really pleased with how this piece turned out. The colors are so interesting to me and it just speaks to me of the ocean and things coming up from the bottom of the ocean. So I don't want to do too, too much to interfere with all this color and interest going on. So I decided I'm only going to use some white sea glass for embellishing on this one. And I'm going to put some strips of kelp and stuff coming up from the bottom, but only three. Three strips of seaweed coming up from the bottom of the ocean. And I'm using my Quick Seal Kitchen and Bath Adhesive Caulk to glue these on. And I'll fuss around with these enough to make really wavy lines of sea glass coming up from the bottom. And I think that's all this is going to need. I think if I put any more on it, it might take away from the interest of what's happening with all the colors and the bubbles and this gold coming up here and the yellows and greens. It's so interesting. So just some white embellishment. I think should be enough to add some interest to this. Let me know what you think of this process. I don't know about you, but I haven't found anybody else online who's doing such crazy stuff. So I'd be really interested to know if you find this interesting. Or if you think I'm taking some of these paint pores and ruining them by adding a bit of sea glass to them.
So this really makes me feel of being underneath the water at the bottom of the ocean. So I don't have to think very hard about how to embellish this one. This to me is so much the bottom of the ocean. So I'm going to put a few things at the bottom here. Some green sea glass and these three little shells. Three pieces of green sea glass, three shells. I like working in groups of three. And then I'm going to put some strips of kelp coming up from the bottom of the ocean. I don't know if you guys get kelp where you are, but at my, at my beach we have all this kelp, which is a kind of seaweed. It's this really thick, wide strip of seaweed that grows up from the bottom. And um, it's kind of intimidating if you're out swimming and all of a sudden you hit a patch of kelp and you have all this this thick stuff kind of rubbing against your body. But um, it's still very cool. It's all wavy and I find working with the brown sea glass it can feel a lot like kelp to me. So I'm going to put three strips of kelp coming up from the bottom of the water here. I don't want to use too much because the pattern of bubbles here in the back on this piece is just spectacular. Just love it. So I think that might be just enough. So this piece is definitely an under the water piece for me and the fact that I've got all this white stuff at the bottom really works for me. So I want to fill that white stuff in with some things that you'd find at the bottom of the ocean. So I'll put a couple of really cool seashells there and some sea glass. It doesn't have to look exactly like the bottom of the ocean, but to me, just to represent the bottom of the ocean is really nice. And some white sea glass going up here. I think that's going to work really nicely. And I have this really cool rock that has all sorts of bubbles and white on it that really mirrors the painting itself. And I thought I'm going to put that at the bottom and then I'm going to put an anuk shuck sitting at the bottom of the ocean. And that just adds some real interest without covering all the white but without interfering at all with all of these bubbles flowing up from the bottom of the ocean. So my lesson of the day for this video is that it's your piece of art. You can do what you want. So here I just kind of went crazy and did whatever I wanted at the bottom of this piece. I'm just in awe of how this swipe technique with paint pouring creates all these bubbles and so much movement reminds me so much of the movement that you see when you're out on the water and underneath the water in particular. I see all three of these pieces as under the water pieces. Which is why I embellish them with some kelp and seaweed and under the water treasures. So thanks so much for joining me for this video. I hope you found it interesting and I hope it inspires you to create some art. And until next time, I hope you make it out to the beach and happy sea glass hunting.